So Dominic, in order for us to hire you, we just have to ask you a couple questions if you don't mind. Uh, first one being, what are your special skill sets? I'm a great multitasker. Um, okay, thank you for that. If you don't mind me asking, why did it take you so long to answer that? I have very bad latency. Perhaps you should have bought a mister, sir. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Poger coming at you with another video. So if you asked me two years ago, I would have told you that I'm a console purist. It's got to be on original hardware or I refuse to play it. But lately I've actually mellowed out and I'm actually really cool with emulation. Emulation is extremely convenient. It allows access to games that people may not otherwise have, whether it's because the console itself is rare, or maybe the game itself is rare, or maybe it's a portable emulator like on your phone that you can't play otherwise. Today I wanted to talk about one of my all-time favorite devices. The Mr. or the Mr. FPGA or the Mr. Project. It goes under a couple different names. I just call it the Mr. This actually emulates the hardware. So this actually mimics the consoles that it does. So kind of think of this as like an NES, a Super Nintendo, a Sega Genesis, all these different consoles built in the one device, but it's like emulating the hardware instead of the software. Isn't that crazy to think? That means you're going to get a lot more accurate emulation out of this thing than you would if you just used a Raspberry Pi. Let me ask you guys a question. Let me know in the comments, what is your guys' opinion about emulation and ROMs? For me, it depends on the age and the rarity of the games that we're talking about. If we're talking about older games, games that a lot of companies are not making money off of, Junior Pac-Man is a game that was made by Midway and Namco never secured the rights to it, so it's basically just a dead game. The only legitimate way to play Junior Pac-Man is to find an arcade cabinet. I'm not going to buy an arcade cabinet for 500 plus dollars. I'm just going to get the ROM and play it that way. That's money that Midway or Namco is not going to have anyway, so I don't really feel bad about doing it. So I think playing games that you would otherwise not have access to, I'm actually honestly cool with it. So anyway, with that said, let's take a look at the mister. In the early 2000s, clone consoles gained a lot of popularity. You would often see them in retro gaming stores. Companies like Hyperkin and Yobo would make NES, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis clone consoles that allowed you to use real cartridges in order to play. These were a nice stocking stuffer for Christmas, and they were pretty cheap, sometimes even less than 50 bucks. The only problem with these clone consoles is that they were cheaply made and the technology inside was very primitive, so your games would be poorly emulated. Basically, you get what you pay for. Later on, a company called Analog had an idea. They wanted to start making consoles that could play retro games just like clone consoles, but with a focus on quality rather than convenience and price. In order to achieve this, they used FPGA for processing. Why is this important? An FPGA-based unit allows for extremely accurate hardware emulation. If you compare the same games side by side, you basically can't tell the difference. This results in a much higher quality product than the clone consoles from Yobo and Hyperkin. Analog released the NT Mini, Super NT, and Mega SG, which emulate the hardware of the NES, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis respectively. 
More recently, Analog came out with the Pocket, which plays a ton of portable game consoles like the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, Atari Lynx, and others. It's a very versatile and powerful piece of hardware, and many people pre-ordered it when it was first released. It has sold out quite a few times, so obviously there's a lot of demand for this thing. Since FPGA technology is expensive, these devices all come with a very high price tag. The NT Mini, for example, was $450. The Super NT retailed for $190 because it has a plastic exterior rather than aluminum. The Analog Pocket is available for pre-order at $220. So if you're a fan of playing your own cartridges and want a quick plug and play option, these consoles are great for that and you're going to have a much greater experience than clone consoles, but you may want to consider one of the newest contenders of the retro gaming scene. This newer piece of hardware uses FPGA technology as well, and is more versatile than any of Analog's consoles. We call it the Mister. So how does the Mister differ from Analog's consoles? There's two main differences. The Mister plays over a hundred different consoles rather than just one console. And you can use ROMs rather than cartridges. So the Mister is way more convenient because it's an all-in-one solution. You don't have to swap out consoles or games if you want to play something different. You can just boot to the menu, select the console and game, and then just go to town. I have a small apartment, so the Mister is super convenient for me. So that's what the Mister is, it's basically an emulation box that plays your ROMs. But there's way more to it than that. So is it worth it? Let's take an honest look at it. First I wanted to talk about the setup. This is very important. The Mister is not a plug and play console. You have to buy the parts individually, assemble them together, and then install the operating system on a micro SD card. You also have to have your own set of ROMs, it does not come pre-installed with games. So as you can see, you have to do some tinkering in order to get your Mister running. I'm going to put a link in the description on how to do all this by the way. So this may seem intimidating, but it's actually a lot easier than you think. The parts literally fit together like Legos, and if you've installed an operating system on your computer, you can do this easily. I had my Mr. Ready to go in less than a half an hour. If you do run into any issues, there are a couple support forums that can help. There's a few subreddits including FPGA Gaming and Mr. FPGA, which have some very knowledgeable people on there. There's also MrFPGA.org. Keep in mind, if you're not super savvy or confident, they do sell pre-built configurations on the Mr. website, where everything is ready to go at a higher price tag. Speaking of price, let's talk about that next. So the Mister is not cheap. For all the parts that I wanted, I paid $360 total. However, you can make a budget build without the extra features. For my Mister, I chose to purchase a USB hub, Wi-Fi adapter, and a couple other add-ons that are not required. Without the extra bells and whistles, you can probably get the price down to under $300. The price is super expensive, and it's only going to get higher right now, but you gotta remember this is an all-in-one device that's expected to last you years. This is cheaper than building a huge game collection and buying every analog console. Like I mentioned earlier, you get what you pay for, but in this case, you get something really nice. So what does this thing play? It supports NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Gear, Master System, Atari 2600, ColecoVision, and many others. It also supports many other consoles too like the Commodore 64, Neo Geo, Amiga, Vectrex, and many others, but I haven't tried tinkering with any of them yet so I don't have any gameplay footage to show here. So what doesn't the Mister support? Well, most notably, the PS1 and Saturn. Both consoles are currently being worked on by developers and look very promising and are expected to be supported on the Mister in the future, but there's no ETA on that. 
The N64 is also not supported, and unfortunately, many developers have come out and said that the Mr. will most likely never support the N64 because the console is just too advanced. Overall, I'm happy with the supported consoles it already has. It's a shame that it's never going to support the N64, but it has all my favorite childhood consoles on it. It's nice that the PS1 and Saturn are being worked on, but as of this video, they're not out yet. So how do the games actually play? When you play on a clone console or an emulator, you might notice some occasional graphical or sound issues when you play. Maybe the colors don't show up correctly, maybe the sound is off. What's nice about the Mister is, since it's hardware emulation rather than software, this allows for a much more accurate experience. Your games will play just like they did on original hardware. You literally cannot get better accuracy than this. Even some speedrun communities accept runs that were done on a Mister as original hardware. Games that support chips that were placed inside the cartridge, like virtual racing, work fine on this too. Alright, so let's talk about latency. So, what exactly is latency? In simple terms, it's how long the game takes to perform your controller inputs. Low latency means when you press the A button, the game will respond quickly, and high latency means the game will take longer to recognize your input. Software emulation generally has higher latency, meaning your controls may feel more delayed. Keep in mind, we're talking about milliseconds here. A casual player may not notice a big difference. When I say software emulation, I'm talking about things like the Raspberry Pi, using an emulator on your phone or computer, those mini consoles, and others. If you're using a USB controller, the Mister has very low latency, very close to original hardware. Since the Mister is once again hardware emulation, this allows for faster polling times on USB controllers. There's also the Snack Adapter, which is an add-on that allows you to use your original controllers on the Mister. Not only is this nice for being able to use your original childhood controllers, but it also gives you the exact same latency as original hardware. Now, I don't have a snack adapter, so I haven't been able to test this out, but I love using my USB controllers. To me, it's good enough. So, I've always been a big fan of Metal Storm on NES. When I was playing on my Raspberry Pi, I had a lot of trouble beating Stage 2. I don't know what it was, but I just had trouble reacting to the enemies, and I was dying constantly. When I booted up this same game on the Mister, I was able to breeze through Stage 2. I just can't put my finger on it, but the experience felt a little bit different to me. The Mister has extremely low latency, very close to original hardware, and if you opt for the snack adapter, your experience will match real hardware to a T. If you're a casual gamer, you may not notice a difference in latency if you're playing on a Raspberry Pi. Also, there is a spreadsheet that was made by Porkchop showing the latencies for various USB and wireless controllers. If you want a good controller, I will link their spreadsheet in this video. Generally, the rule of thumb is, the 8-bit Do controllers are very good, and I've heard a lot of good things about the iBuffalo Super Nintendo controllers for their low latency and quality. So, how well can you customize your Mister? On the main menu, you can change the font and background picture. In the I and I settings, you can customize a few other things too, but overall, it's not as customizable as something like the Raspberry Pi. With the Pi, there's a hundred different themes and startup screens you can use, and you can get this nice interface that includes the game box and general information about the game. This is one of the examples where the Pi is better. If you love the ability to customize, you might prefer the Pi. I still think the Mister is better, even if you can't change around as many things on the menu. So let's talk about cases for the Mister. I highly recommend a case in general for your Mister, so that your Mister doesn't get damaged or dirty easily. 
Anyway, there's definitely some room for improvement here because there's just not that many cases available. Most of the ones that are, are like 3D printed and the quality is very inconsistent. Mr. Add-ons has these metal cases that look fantastic, but they're constantly sold out. The case I own right now, I ended up buying it off eBay. I really do hope in the future that more groups will make higher quality Mr. Cases. If you look at Raspberry Pi cases, you'll notice that there are actually a lot more options for it. I wish the Mr. had the same. So who is the Mr. for? The Mr. is for you if you like tinkering with things and you don't mind the setup process. If you want your games to be accurate like real hardware. If you're a diehard retro gamer that needs low latency in your games. If you don't mind paying a bit more for a quality product. Or if you don't mind using ROMs and already have your own set of them. So who is the Mr. not for? The Mr. is not for you if you're looking for a quick plug and play device that's ready to go. You may be better off with one of the analog consoles or the mini consoles like the NES Classic or Genesis Mini. If you're on a budget, a Raspberry Pi would run you much less. If you're a casual gamer that may not notice emulation issues or latency issues, you would get by fine with a Raspberry Pi. If you want to use your original cartridges, the analog consoles are a better fit for you. Or, if you're not comfortable with using ROMs, analog is your best bet. So while the Analog Pocket and their other consoles are great, the Mister may be a better investment because it's an all-in-one device that will save you money over time. The Analog consoles support only one console each, except for the Pocket which supports a few, while the Mister supports 20 plus consoles. The Mister is just more convenient to plug in, and it's easier to switch games than it is with the Analog. But with that said, the Mister is not for everyone. So just a reminder, I purchased this with my own money. I was not given a review copy or anything, and this is not a paid sponsor. I just wanted to give my thoughts about it, because I've really enjoyed using my Mister, and some of my viewers might be a good fit for this. You might like this. So thanks so much for watching this video guys. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like rating. That alone helps the video get noticed by more people. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so you're automatically updated when my next video is out. More content is coming. I recently hit a thousand subscribers. Thanks so much to all my friends and fans for making this possible. Let's aim for 10k. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Poger coming at you with another video. So if you asked me two years ago, I would have told you that I'm a hard But rather than emulating software like a Raspberry Pi would do, this actually emulates the software. Ooh. In my personal opinion, in my personal opinion, Scratch that. <laughs> Junior Pac-Man is... Nope. So, playing games... Um, let me think about this. So with that said, let me know in the comments. How do you guys... I have very bad latency. Perhaps you should have bought a mister, sir.